turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. Probably a very familiar passage of scripture for most everyone that is here. It is like, uh, I guess you'd say, the third miracle of Elisha. and see how that God used men that were not so long ago, even though it seems like a long time for us. But uh, it should not be so amazing that he would use us also. Right, amen. And uh, but sometimes I think it is. And, and I'm I don't want to be misunderstood. It is amazing what God does all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, instead of being an occasional thing with the Church of the Living God, miracles should be a normal thing. Amen. Right. Of course, God has a time and a season in which He operates and the things He does. And uh, Irene's passing out some things tonight because we're going to do a little demonstration. And, uh, but if you have your place in chapter 4 of 2 Kings, we'll go ahead and read there. Give me a big healthy hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the son of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And they all stayed. And she came and told the man of God and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children on the rest. The provision of God is an amazing thing. Amen. But I wonder sometimes if we, and I don't mean that we should be greedy, so please don't get the wrong idea of what I'm about to say. I wonder sometimes if we are satisfied with too little. If we decide that, okay, I can get by. But Jesus said something that we ought to take to heart. And this is usually said when people are preaching on tithes and giving. And that's not what my message is all about tonight. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now personally, I've been on both ends of that. I've been to the point that it was a great blessing to receive because I had a need. 
And let me tell you, it is much more joyful to be able to give when somebody else has a need. So Jesus knew exactly what he was talking about. It is good to be able to walk in a life of abundance. St. John 10 and 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, abundantly. 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 Well, glory. I want to preach to you tonight that we should not be complacent and decide that we're happy with what we got. Amen. Now again, don't misunderstand me. I am thankful with how God has blessed us thus far. I looked out there during revival and saw the parking lot fill up and saw the new parking lot begin to fill up and I was thankful that we have that. Amen. I look back across this building, see the pews that we have and I am thankful that we have them. I look around this building and across this stage and see how God has blessed us tremendously with electronics, and I'm thankful for all of that. Amen. But we're not yet in the abundant zone. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. We're not yet in the abundant zone. We could get real complacent. We could begin to think that we are rich. But we are not. We will be rich when the power of God begins to move in this house, in each and every individual, till we are winning souls into the kingdom of God. I am preaching to you tonight that we need to be an abundant church. Amen. Yes. I am telling you that we need to be so filled with the Spirit of God that we are drawing people into this place. Amen. I don't know what kind of miracle it's going to take. I don't know exactly what has to happen, but I know that God has a plan. Amen. Amen. I believe that God has a plan for us as this church to move forward beyond what we've even thought about yet. Amen. Yeah. Can I read a passage of scripture to you? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Look at your neighbor and say exceedingly abundantly. Exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. All right, talk to your neighbor tonight. Help me preach. Amen. That worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. We have not arrived. Right. We're just still on the journey. Amen. And we need to be moving to a higher level. Amen. Right. To a higher level. Amen. Now you see, this poor woman, she cried unto the Lord. And the prophet, she cried unto the prophet, which was a cry unto the Lord because she knew him to be the man of God. Mm -hmm. And he told her, what you got? You know, sometimes we don't have an increase because we don't use what we have. That's right. Amen. Sometimes the reason we don't have more is we're not using what we got. Amen. We need to use what we've got to the fullest. Amen. And then expect more. Amen. Expect an abundance. Yes, now, I have to confess to you that I wonder sometimes if I have kind of missed the mark. I don't ever want to be arrogant. I don't ever want to be obnoxious. I don't ever want to be offensive. But I wonder sometimes in 
one of the reasons I'm like that is because I have seen in my family, especially my dad's side of the family, they're pretty egotistical. Always trying to climb above somebody else. And I've seen the fall that comes from pride. And so I have tried to put a defense out to not be prideful and not be arrogant. Amen. And to be humble. And I want to always be humble before God, but I tell you, all you've got to do to be humble before God is just get in His presence. When you begin to see who He is and who you are, it's not a problem to be humble. Amen. When you begin to realize that every breath that you take is the gift from Him Amen. and that the things that are given to you is not because you are deserving but because He is giving and loving. Right. It'll cause you to be humble. Yes. But at the same time, if we're not careful, we try to get into the mode that, well, you know, it's little old me, I can't do anything. So on my own, I can't. On my own, I can't. But I've decided that maybe, just maybe, if I'll just do my best, God will do the rest. Yes, and maybe God can use even little old me. Yes. If I am willing to say, okay, God, whatever it is you want. You see... I want the name of Jesus to be exalted. And I want to be all I can be for the Lord. Now I want you to think on this. You may want to even take this home and chew on it. I believe that when we come to the point that we're doing everything we can to be all that we can be for the Lord, that the Lord can take us to a higher level. That's right. Yes. Hmm? Yes. And He can put us in a plane to where we can be more effective and to where we can do exceedingly abundantly above what we thought we could do because He is with us, because He is in us, because... Whenever our oil cruise is running low, he can fill it again. Hallelujah. And I don't believe he just fills it like we fill a glass of water. Hmm? I believe he makes our cup run over so that we have more than enough. He's more than enough to make the blind man to see. He's more than enough to take sin out of me. He's more than enough to turn the water to wine. He's more than enough to feed a family like mine. You see, he's more than enough in every situation. So I have asked Guy Green to help me tonight to preach and to help me with this little demonstration. I want you to take your bowl. I want you to set your plate under it. She's going to come by. Now, at the end of this, you can put it in your little bag and take it home and eat it. Or you can throw it in the trash can on your way out. It's your choice, whatever you want to do with it. But I have asked Irene to help me with this demonstration. Michael Combs recorded a song. And a friend of mine in Albany, Kentucky, that's gone on to be with the Lord now, Carl Cross, he would sing that song, and I always thought he just did just as good, if not better, than Michael Combs. And you're going to understand what the song is as she comes around to you tonight. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Amen. And at one point in that song, he said something that I want you to grab a hold of tonight. My cup runneth over. Amen. My cup runneth over. Why is my cup running over? Because when I am more than full, there is enough for someone else. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know what I tell folks, and I've did this demonstration here before about being filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't want you to just get filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen to me before you think I'm saying something wrong. I don't want you to just get filled with the Holy Ghost. I want you to run over. Yeah. In Malachi 3 and 10, he said, Bring ye all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Huh? Why would he give you more than enough? So you can share it with somebody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Anybody's bowl running over? Huh? Anybody's bowl running over? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's because you can share. Yeah. That's because you'll have extra to give. He does for us exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I have decided that I have missed something, Brother Dale. I have decided that when I, little old me, when I come to the point that I have become all that I can be, And I'm still humble before him. Come on now. Uh -huh. I want to get it all right. I don't want to mislead anybody. When I come to the point that I have become all that I can be and I'm still humble before him, he will make me more than I ever was. Right. Because he wants us to go to a higher plane. Amen. Amen. He wants us to go to a higher plane. Huh? See, she was in debt. And the one she owed the debt to was going to take her sons as bondmen. My, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. They, some of us, that maybe the devil is trying to steal our children yes. and bind them. Yes. And bind them. Yes. Maybe we should cry out to the man of God. Yes. And he says, what have you got? And you say, I got a little oil. You know, the oil represents the spirit. There's just a little bit of spirit in me, in my cruise. And Elisha didn't say, I'm just going to fill the cruise. He said, but go borrow vessels and borrow not a few. Uh, we plan on having a back to church Sunday program here shortly. 
And I want you to bring some vessels and not just a few. I don't want to see that 77 on that board anymore. I want it to be over 100. Amen. Oh, preacher, you're dreaming. That's all right. Just let me dream on. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I want us to borrow some vessels and not a few, and empty vessels. You know what an empty vessel is? It's those that does not have the Spirit of God yet. Amen. Are you following me tonight? I want you to borrow some vessels and borrow not a few. Yeah, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Yeah, no matter where they've been or what they've done, tell them to come in. There is going to be a feast in the house of the Lord. Compel them to come in. And then we're going to shut the door. And God's going to fill the cruise. Amen. And then he's going to start filling vessels. Vessel after vessel. Maybe one at a time. You know, sometimes we want to make a big splash. And we want to think, oh, if I could get 20 people saved. We can. If each one of us gets one saved, we'd have over 20 people. Amen. Amen. I think there's 21 here tonight, isn't there? So if each one of us gets 22, well, good. If each one of us would bring in one that would get saved. We'd have more than 20 saved. Sometimes you've got to focus on the one little lamb. You know how we need to win the world of Christ? One soul at a time. Amen. Now, if you get the picture here, if we win one soul this year, and we win one soul next year, and they win one soul next year, this house might be full before I go to glory. Huh? Wow, wouldn't that be good? Yeah. yeah. I'm not in any hurry to go, but I'm ready. But I tell you, it would really thrill me to see the vision fulfilled that God's given me. I've carried it for years and years and years, Brother Dale. And sometimes I've thought, Lord, if you don't hurry and do it, I ain't never going to see it. Can I share with you the dream that I had? The house was packed. And it wasn't just packed with people. Even though it was packed with people, it wasn't just people. It was packed with power. Yeah. Glory! You didn't get what I'm talking about. It wasn't just packed with people. It was packed with power. Amen. And I saw people being delivered from demons. I saw God working miracles in his house. And even though Tonight, it would look like I'm a long ways from ever seeing it. My God's still able. Amen. amen. My God's still able. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, I guess really we've come down to where the rubber meets the road tonight. 
Do you think maybe you might could grab a hold of this vision with me? Yes. Do you think maybe we might could get in one mind and one accord about this? Do you think maybe that we could actually believe God to do such a thing as this? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Sister Diana and Randy and Gwen, they've labored in this church for years and years and years. Probably been a few times they've been discouraged. Probably been a few times they've wondered if it's going to go anywhere. Well, I'm here to tell you I don't believe God's done yet. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes. Are you ready to get with me tonight? Yes. I don't believe God's done yet. I believe we've only just begun. Yes. I believe we've come to the point of where the iceberg is. And we've just begun to chip on it. Huh? On our trip with the Gators, we went to see the Hubbard Glacier. It's a huge thing, like a big, huge mountain of ice. Very magnificent. But the sun was shining that day. And the ship was pretty good ways back from it. Probably for good reason. Because every once in a while, that sun was at work. And there'd be a great old big piece of that ice that'd fall off and when it hit the water, it'd make a big splash and it would sound like a gun going off. Because the iceberg was being chipped away. Yeah. And we, we, need to take our ice picker, our sword, the word of God, and begin to chip away the iceberg that we see in the world. Amen. God is wanting to make a difference. Amen. God wants to fill your cup until it runs over. Amen. Yeah. You started out with an empty bowl. Yes, I did. Your bowl's full. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah and your plate's almost full. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You've got an abundance now. You've got an abundance. Woo! Hallelujah! Bless him, Lord. You see, that precious mother that was concerned for her sons cried out to the man of God, and she filled every vessel in the house. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Are you getting that? Amen. Remember I told you I had a vision of a house that was packed with people, but it wasn't just packed with people. They were vessels full. It was packed with power. Oh, preacher, you just dreaming well. Just let me dream all. Just by God's sake. Amen. By God's sake. He's like. There's two things that the devil does set a trap for us, majorly. There's other things, but two major things that he does. Because he knows how to get to our flesh. And let me tell you, don't get to thinking that you're above temptation because all flesh is weak. That's right. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Number one, the devil will try to depress you. He comes with oppression. Life happens. Yeah, and while life's happening, he tries to make you think that it's because you've done something wrong. No, it's because sin entered into the world. Amen. That's right. And
And because of the prince of this world is trying to take captive everybody he can. Yes, he and we need to be on guard. Mm -hmm. And he tries to oppress you. If that doesn't work, he tries to get you to get into self-exaltation. Oh, I'm the big man on campus. Look at me, I got it. You know why he does that? Because pride that goeth north before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. When he tries to get you too big for your britches, he knows God's going to cut you down. You see, I'll try to quit that while. You see, whenever the king of Moab saw the children of Israel and saw how that God had blessed them, he went to a prophet. And he said, I want you to go curse this people. And the prophet came, and every time that he'd get a word from God, God would bless his people. Huh? But the prophet sold out for the things of the world. And because he could not curse Israel, he told the king, he said, now here's how you can cause them to fall. If you can seduce them into immorality and to serving false gods, God will turn against them. Balaam taught Balak. That's what the devil does. He's teaching others how to come at you, how to get at your flesh, how to tempt you, how to bring you down. If he can get you entangled in the things of the world, he knows that the chastening hand of God will fall on you. And if you're not strong and deal with the chastening hand of God as a son, he can cause you to have destruction. That's right. Beware of the devil's devices. And remember that he came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Did everybody's bowl run over? Yes. <laughs> Glory! I like it. I like it when your cup runs over. Yeah. I like it when you have more than enough. Amen. And you learn that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. I'm here to tell you it is really a blessing to receive like we have received in this revival. And I pray that you have received more than a cup full. I pray that your cup has run over. Amen. And that you're going to use it unto the glory of God. Unto the glory of God. I didn't have a lot of notes tonight, so maybe I haven't preached too long. But I hope long enough. Long enough that you've got the point. That you've got the point. 